is Neptune, where less than 48 hours ago, the greatest disaster of our galaxy's history took place. It was a normal, peaceful afternoon when suddenly... The atmosphere converter which transformed Neptune's poisonous methane atmosphere to pure oxygen, making the rich planet habitable to Earth people, blew up. Instantly, panic gripped the populace. Not long after the disaster, it was discovered that two of the galaxy's most trusted public servants, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov of the GBI, had caused the explosion from a remote control device on Earth. Coincidentally, Flash Gordon and Dale Arden landed on Neptune at the moment of the explosion. There were only 48 hours to install a new converter before the entire population of Neptune would suffocate from the poison methane gas. While the new lines were being laid, and while Flash and Dale prepared the auxiliary converter, an agent of Zyderine, the Mad Witch of Neptune, seeks the new converter to destroy it before Flash and Dale can turn it on. Ah. Turn it on, Dale! blast is that? I've never seen him before. And why did he try to stop us from turning on the converter? I don't know. Maybe it had something to do with the explosion of the original one. That's wishful thinking, Flash. After all, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov have practically admitted they blew it up. They've admitted nothing, except that they were found in the remote control demolition room, and their individual keys were in the Neptune locks. Look, you know I love them both. Why, next to you, they mean more to me than anybody else in the universe. But how can we fight such red-handed evidence? Uh, two points, Dale. First, neither Zarkov nor Richards knows how he got to the vault. Second, neither one remembers putting the keys in and closing the circuit. I'm afraid no court would believe it. No, but we do. Now, if we can find out what made them go to the vault and what made them put their keys in and close the circuits, well, probably we can clear their names. Maybe he can give us the answer. No. But I tried. I did everything you asked. I know. I know. What's that all about? He seems to be talking to someone else. Bring me back. We can try again. Bring me back. Bring you back where? Where? Come on, talk. Bring you back where? signal he was wearing. You feel it. Warmth and texture. Just like human flesh. Yet it's metal. Some kind of a strange alloy. It's a clue, Dale. If we can find out where that came from, perhaps we can find out who was really responsible for the detonation. But it's not too late. Now that we know where the converter is located, we can blow it up ourselves. You fool, you stupid, blundering fool. But we can do it, I tell you. Flash Gordon and the girl will be gone in a few minutes. And when they are gone, a radium ray will flood the entire installation. It will kill instantly anybody that enters its field. Neptune, because I control the royal family. 
because I was the power behind the throne. I was the ruler. You will rule again, almighty Zydery. He bowed to me, kissed my hand. Everyone trembled when my name was mentioned. Yes, I will rule Neptune again, but this time I will be the queen. The ruler in name, as well as back. The throne was here, in my hand. It was you, your blundering stupidity, that ruined it all. Almighty oh, Zydering, you have not lost. There is a way. A way for you to hold in your hands the power of the galaxy. What do you mean? You have thought to use all of this to conquer only Neptune. But why? Why merely Neptune? The machines you possess give you the power to control every planet in the galaxy. Yes. Yes. Every planet in the galaxy. I can penetrate into the most secret chambers of the galaxy. Through this, I am all powerful. In this, I have the strength of ten men. There is no knowledge, no secret in the universe I cannot gain. With this, my brain recorder. What do you make of it, Dale? Recognize any of the metals in that alloy? It has a tractor-seal base, but there are about seven other elements which I can't identify. Tractor-seal? That's a metal that's found on Saturn, isn't it? Yes. And in small quantities on Pluto and Uranus. That narrows its origin down to three possible planets. Wasn't this disk gray when we first landed on Neptune? Yes. It's turning black. And the insignia, which was black, is turning gray. I have been blinded by my desire for revenge, Prostar. I hold the power to control the entire galaxy. And you can, if first you destroy the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation. They have the knowledge that stands in your way. Then why destroy them, Frostar? They will serve me. First, I will record all the scientific knowledge possessed by Dr. Zorkoff, the military knowledge of Commander Richards. That is the start, Prostar. Soon, soon, the mad witch of Neptune shall rule their galaxy. What do you make of it? Obviously, it's an alloy that's sensitive to some sort of emanation. The further away it is from the source of the emanation, the more the color changes. If that's true, when we get close to the right planet, the disk will turn toward white and the insignia toward black. It's even better than a bloodhound. As soon as we've talked to Dr. Zarkoff and Commander Richards again, we'll take off and let our little alloy bloodhound lead us to its home. I hope they're all right. How terrible it must be for them. Two men who have devoted their entire lives to loyal service to the galaxy, accused of the greatest crime they could commit. Impossible. They couldn't have escaped. I've been outside that door every second. But I swear there's no way they could have gone. I didn't leave my post outside that door for a second. Flash, what do you make of it? I can't believe that either Dr. Zarkoff or Commander Richards would try to escape. Try to escape? But where are they if they didn't? I don't know just now. 
But I've got an idea how I can find out. Come on, Dale. All right, but where to? Wherever this alloy bloodhound leads us. This is Guard Turbulent, Special Post 5. Sound the red alarm. Dr. Zarkov and Commander Richards have escaped. She comes with the prisoners. Her tracer alloy tracer disc is entering the Saturn field. Gentlemen, I hope the journey from Earth to Saturn was not too uncomfortable. Saturn? How can we be on Saturn when not 15 minutes ago we were in my office at GBI on Earth? A metal transmitter machine. Yes, this is it here. Matter transmitter? Yes. The elements of our bodies were broken down into electrical units and transmitted through space. When I appeared in your office, Commander, I focused this disc upon each of you. I see. The remote control projector for the matter transmitter. My improvement upon your own design of a one-way matter transmitter machine, Dr. Zarkov. My design? Why, that's impossible. That's top secret GBI information. Top secret. When I have need of information, I assure you there have always been ways of getting it. Just as you have served my purpose, so have others. We, Dr. Zarkov and I, have served your purpose. Ah, yes, I forgot. The last time we met, I erased all memory of the meeting from your minds. Prostar put the memory back into their minds. It is in the Electro memory file under GBI's Arkoff Richards. Zydere, the witch of Neptune. It was you. You forced us to demolish the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. Transported through a matter transmission machine to Saturn by Zyderine, the Mad Witch of Neptune, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov learn that it was she who forced them to blow up the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. Sit down. Strap them in. little satisfaction when we know that millions of lives are lost. What happened on Neptune? Was anybody saved? Did they at least try to get the children out? I will answer you this way. My revenge is not complete. Zyderine, we warn you. You warn me? You, my prisoners, and on the outside the most wanted criminals in the history of the galaxy, you dare to warn me. No. You will serve me again. As I took from your minds every recollection of my part in your crime against Neptune, I will now take from your minds all of the knowledge they possess. Doctor, can she, can she do this? Certainly she can. The electronic brain recorder is an elementary device, the principles of which have been known for over a thousand years. Well, if you know how it works, you must know how to combat it. Only a psyllium headpiece can prevent the reading ray from entering the brain. I'm sorry, Commander. I don't happen to have one handy. 
the knowledge that she takes from us. It, it will still be in our brains. What about it? Do we retain our knowledge? No, Dr. Sarkoff. There is an eraser ray that follows the recorder ray as it passes over every inch of your brain. Zydarine, listen. You can't do this. Between us, we hold the knowledge upon which the safety of the entire galaxy depends. Exactly the information I want. Every morsel of it. The galaxy. What do I care for its safety? All I want is the power to make every living human bend to my will. Start the ray flow. I want to test. Settings at 8, 12, 1,000. A very simple setting for the commonest and simplest memory. What did you say your name is? Well, it's Richards. Paul Richards. Open the ray locks and record the setting, Prostar. painless operation. And I still have my memory. Really? What did you say your name is? <laughs> Why, it's, uh, yeah. See for yourself, Dale. When we left Earth, the disk was coal black and the insignia clear white. As though we're at the halfway point. From here on, the disk should turn white and the insignia black. Halfway point. Let's see where we are now. If this is the halfway mark, I'll be able to figure out exactly where we're going. We should be about halfway through the asteroid belt. No, we're about three quarters of the way through it. At space point A, B, 12. Well, that means our destination is, uh... Yes. That is, if our little alloy bloodhound isn't playing tricks on us. That's all we've got to go on. It's our only possibility to the whereabouts of Dr. Zarkoff and Commander Richards. I wonder where they are. And how they escaped, I mean, left GBI without being seen. How is it possible? Flash feel of it. Remember how warm it was before? As though it were a living thing? Yeah, now it's stone cold. It's as though something had been giving it warmth. And that something has been turned off now. A machine of some kind. That controls this disk by remote control. Well, at least the color continues to change. Which means that the machine hasn't been completely turned off. Yeah. Saturn in another few hours. And once we get there, the real job begins. With Saturn being as large as it is, it's going to be like looking for a grain of metal dust in the firmament to find out exactly where this alloy bloodhound roosts. And now, a brain recording of Commander Richards, the outer defense radar locations on planets, planetoids, and satellites. There it is. Saturn coming up on radar. At last. It's almost white. As we move closer, you can almost see it change. But where do we land? And where do we start looking when we do? I'm going to rocket break around the planet until we hit the atmosphere. Then I'll work into a series of 
landing brake ellipses until we find it. Find what? The spot where the disc shows the clearest white. Hang on. for another turn. frequency machine of some kind. It's further down, I guess. and defensive secret of the GBI which they possessed. You're lying. They'd never give up that information. No, sir. Let us see for herself. Dr. Zarkov. memory file, billions and billions of tiny electrical units, which I will transfer to my mind and use to gain the complete control of the galaxy. You are wasting your strength. No man can move against the power in this wand. Oh, stop him! them. Their memory's gone. Their mind's a complete blank. Well, at least, at least we can clear their name. That's not enough, Dale. Somehow, some way, we've got to find that woman before she can 
use the knowledge she got from their minds to destroy the galaxy. Wherever she's disappeared to, I swear it, I'll find her.